good morning everyone and uh, today our topic of discussion is acute abdomen it is written over here diagnosis and management of acute abdominal pain which is another way to say acute abdomen so basically the topic is acute abdomen okay uh, so now what is acute abdomen um, acute abdomen is uh, uh, basically we say acute abdomen uh, to any presentation uh, of any patient who is presented with abdominal pain so uh, we call it as acute abdomen so uh, why this topic is important because you know surgery um, uh, like in surgical uh, in surgery wards uh, uh, when you will be working in surgery surgical wards you will you are going to find a lot of patients um, every day who will be presented to the hospital or to the emergencies or to the opds with uh, pain in the abdomen so uh, by definition simply acute abdomen refers to signs and symptoms of abdominal pain and tenderness right so uh, now um it's not like this that you know um every abdominal pain or every abdominal tenderness requires a surgery of course it's not like this but uh, but many of them uh, could be um uh, could be the reason which requires surgery and sometimes emergency surgery so that's why it's very 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 important uh, topic to cover and uh, now uh, um, as I told you, uh, that it's very, very common that the patients are present to the hospitals um, every day uh, with abdominal pain. So uh, that makes it very challenging um, to um, take history, do physical examination, or to, or to simply for the doctors to decide like uh, what could be the reason behind this uh, acute abdomen and um, what kind of management is needed. Uh, as I told you, like not every case is surgical case, of course, so uh, that's the reason. So uh, what uh, our aim in this lecture should be is to um, make, uh, to learn the basics, okay, or to, to remember the basic concepts um, so that, you know, um, every attempt should be made to make a correct diagnosis um, and, of course, like, and of course, when you make the correct diagnosis, then uh, you can um, select the required um, therapy, which could be surgical or nurse non-surgical, and if surgical, which could be a laparoscopy or a laparotomy. Um, as I told you, like laparoscopy is like a newer technique in which they use a laparoscope. Um, a small hole is made um, on the tummy, and that laparoscope and or you can say multiple small holes can be made and uh, cuts can be made and from that instruments can be passed whereas laparotomy is uh, um, I'm going to show you the photographs of these things as well so laparotomy is something uh, in which of course like they, they open the whole tummy uh, or abdomen and they try to fix up the thing so now uh, the important thing to over here if you will see here you know they they, they they write down more than 1000 causes exist of acute abdomen so see uh, non specific abdominal pain constitute or about 34% which means like uh, non specific abdominal pain uh, like they don't require any surgery acute appendicitis makes a lot of big percentage of people which present with acute abdomen uh, acute cholecystitis then there is small bowel obstruction perforated peptic ulcer pancreatitis, diverticular disease, and others. So, uh, 20 to 40% admission rates and 50 to 65 inaccurate initial diagnosis. So, now, um, um, uh, to start with, of course, I will be talking very basic things, right? But uh, uh, believe me, like, those basic things are very important, uh, like how to take history, how to do physical examination, and what kind of things can help you in making the right, the correct decision. Uh, let's for example if I will ask you to tell you that you know when we take history we ask the name we ask the age we ask the like not we ask but like we know what is the sex of the person so 
each and everything is important. For example, uh, a young patient uh, uh, could be a patient of appendicitis, for example, whereas a female in her 40s or 50s or even in her 30s who is fat could be a patient of acute cholecystitis, for example. Uh, sorry, like the spelling is not correct. So, uh, could be a patient of acute cholecystitis. Okay. Uh, whereas if you know like if the patient is like an old patient uh, in old age patients you know uh, maybe a patient is a, is of bowel obstruction for example right so uh, things like this and uh, of course like i'm talking about the surgical causes but whereas there are many non-surgical causes as well uh, for example uh, non-surgical causes uh, you know in uh, Diabetic ketoacidosis, you know, the patient may have abdominal pain, which is not a surgical uh, patient or uh, There are many other conditions in which like the patient may have this acute uh, like pain in the tummy um, Sometimes it's a, it's a side effect of uh, uh, Certain drugs Sometimes it's due to withdrawal of some some drugs like for example a narcotic withdrawal can result into uh, tummy pain or abdominal pain, okay, so now uh, of course, like our aim is to um, uh, talk about the causes, um, simply uh, our aim is to look for the causes, you know, uh, which require surgery and how the decision is made and what we can do to help the patients, okay. Uh, before going in too much detail, um, I would like to talk about some um, basics, for example. Uh, see. Um, here they have written pathophysiology and there is a visceral pain parietal pain and referred pain uh, basically abdominal pain is divided into visceral and parietal components you know um, and a little understanding of how the pain uh, sensations are carried uh, should be known of course uh, if you will see over here like these are the name of the uh, organs which are present in the body and then what is the innervations what are the nerves or what are the plexus which are uh, supplying them so uh, visceral pain uh, which basically arises from uh, visceras like liver like heart like colon like kidney um, it usually results whenever there is any dist distension inflammation or ischemia to any solid organ right uh, now uh, see, the localization of this kind of pain is very uh, important to understand. Uh, they are poorly localized, okay, um, or they are poorly localized according to their embryological origin. For example, uh, most of the visceral pains are localized to epigastrium or uh, peri umbilical region or hypogastrium, for example. Uh, because you know because they originate from foregut midgut or hindgut so depending on what uh, like the one which uh, originate from foregut their pain will uh, what you can say uh, is going to uh, localize to epigastric area uh, midgut umbilicus and hindgut to hypogastric areas and before like uh, let me tell you one thing that you know uh, we can um, you can say uh, divide abdomen into nine quadrants which is too basic by the way uh, but like of course some who don't know uh, I must tell you this thing so uh, basically we we make two lines over here and two lines over here so this is uh, right upper quadrant and this is uh, epigastric area then there is left upper quadrant and then there is you know right inferior quadrant is this one then there is left inferior quadrant is this one uh, so like this one you know uh, the tummy can be divided into nine sections okay so uh, now um, that's what's going on over here so uh, epigastrium is the middle part of the uh, tummy uh, simply uh, uh, like the middle one the middle upper one is epigastric area so uh, of course like uh, whenever the these organs are distended the pain will be referred to uh, or will be felt in the area where they originally um, 
came from okay uh, now there is something called as referred pain so referred pain uh, is basically a pain which is uh, which is perceived or which is felt at a different site which is basically away from the locality from the location of the uh, thing which is affected uh, for example um, um, okay let's take an example of what we were discussing um, cholecystitis like there is a referred pain to the tip of the shoulder right for example um, and uh, um, there are many other examples you know sometimes the pain around the hip uh, is referred in the knee okay uh, and then there is a parietal pain um, simply that is carried by dermatomes and that is of course felt at the area which is basically um, affected so this is like this is uh, the important things to remember and uh, uh, every pain have its different characters and every pain have its uh, like uh, if you remember my first very first lecture um, I told you how to take the history of pain and uh, in that one I talk about the side the origin the severity the character and all this stuff so uh, now, uh, the site is going to give you a lot of information. Uh, the severity is going to give you a lot of information. The radiation is going to give you a lot of information and all those things. Okay. So, um, okay. Uh, let's move forward. Um, okay. For example, see. Uh, here they are talking about the visceral pain. For example, um, these are the areas where the pain pain is felt. So uh, uterine pain or colon pain is felt over here. Uh, suprapubic region, small bowel, umbilical region, stomach pain, gallbladder pain. Okay, and then if you will see over here, uh, this is the example of the parietal pain. For example. Uh, cholecystitis and hepatitis so of course like they are over here so the pain is felt over here pancreas is right down below here so the pain is felt over here and for example the pain of the pancreas radiate backwards so uh, that is one of the things by which we can catch okay the patient may have pancreatitis uh, the pain of appendicitis same like ectopic pregnancy uh, diverticulitis okay um, same thing uh, for example, if you will take the referred pain thing, uh, you can see over here. The esophagus pain, the stomach pain, the liver and gallbladder pain, pylorus, colon pain, left and right kidney, and ure ureteric pain. And same thing with the back of the patient, uh, diaphragmatic pain biliary colic, acute pancreatitis and renal colic, as well as uterine and rectal pain. So this is how they are referred. Uh, so this is one of the thing. Now, if you will see over here, uh, again, okay, uh, before going on this, I think like it's better to tell you some of the causes so that the things will become easy for you. Okay, now, um, There are more than 1,000 causes of pain in abdomen, right? Or uh, tummy pain, simply. Of course, not all, but I uh, include a lot of causes in this um, in this slide. Uh, see, so that's why, if you'll see over here, this is etiopathological classification. So see a lot of things can result into acute abdomen uh, number one is inflammatory or infective causes like acute cholecystitis liver abscess acute pancreatitis ibds acute appendicitis acute diverticulitis meckel's diverticulitis Pelvic inflammatory diseases, which could be self-angitis or tubo ovarian abscess, UTIs, which could be acute pyelonephritis or acute cystitis. So, uh, of course, like, see, I, I try to include a lot of things, but 
Um, these are not all because there are many other itis or infections or inflammations, in other words, which can result into uh, pain in the tummy. So, um, but of course, like some of them, they are written over here. And the common one are written over here. Uh, the pain can be due to perforation. Any organ which is perforated, like a perforated peptic ulcer, a perforated appendicitis, or perforated cholecystitis, perforated small bowel, esophageal perforation, perforated colon, or aortic dissection. Or you can say a ruptured aortic aneurysm, okay? Because we are talking about perforation, so rupt, uh, ruptured um, aortic aneurysm. Okay, so that that makes more sense. So, so uh, okay, these are all the causes. What you can say uh, in which the patient may have the pain, okay, due to perforation. If you will see over here, obstruction of intestines or GIT, like which could be a small bowel obstruction, which could be a large bowel obstruction, which could be a biliary colic, like our previous lecture was about this, right? So as I told you, what is biliary colic? For example, if there is a stone which is impacted in the cystic duct or in the common bile duct it can result into pain so that is called as biliary colic and the same thing for example if the stone of the kidney is going to stuck somewhere in the ureters so the same thing will happen it will result into renal colic and when we are going to ask the patient about history about how the pain where the pain is um uh, what is the intensity, what is the severity, what is the radiation, what is the timing, what is the character of the pain, uh, the things will become easy, uh, the things will become clear and uh, uh, we by, by taking history and physical examination uh, we can reach to the uh, point where like what kind of condition maybe the patient is suffering from. Uh, if you will see over here uh, infarctions uh, which can lead to pain in the abdomen can be uh, any kind of thromboembolic diseases like acute intestinal ischemia, renal infarctions, splenic infarction, infarctions, um, gastrointestinal volvulus, or mental torsion, um, intersusception, um, torsion of ovary or subcutaneous fluid. So, so fibroid. So, see uh, now everything makes sense. Uh, you had a patient, a male, uh, for example, 40 years of age, and he is giving you a family history of renal stones, or he is giving you a past history of renal stones, and the pain is very typical to renal stones. So it could be renal colic. Uh, whereas if you have a patient, um, a very, uh, what you can say, young, uh, a child, for example, two years of age, uh, who presented with the... Um, like too much pain, the baby is crying, clenching his uh, hands and uh, crying a lot with the, the red currant jelly stools. So maybe the baby have intersusception, right? So see, all the causes make sense. Um, then see, uh, again, one more section you can see over here, a spontaneous intraperitoneal bleed. For example, a ruptured aortic aneurysm, right? Uh, any ruptured viscera. Uh, any rupture of pathologically enlarged spleen, for example, maybe after uh, what you can say that uh, infectious mononucleosis, you know, the spleen becomes so large, massive, and sometimes while playing, if uh, uh, not just playing, like any kind of a blow uh, directly on the spleen can, can rupture that, or rupture hepatic tumor, you know, and in the females, it could be ruptured ectopic pregnancy, ruptured ovarian cyst, ruptured graphene follicle, uh, ruptured endometriosis. So, see, uh, a lot of causes are there. Uh, 
other than that see now these are the medical causes of acute abdominal pain which or you can say like the non-surgical acute abdomen uh, simply uh, a, this is the patients in which mm, basically no surgery is needed so uh, see uh, you feel uh, abdominal pain when you uh, get infected with gastroenteritis or uh, for example someone have infective colitis then there is mesenteric adenitis the people uh, the patients who had typhoid fever, they have pain in tummy. UTIs can result into pain in tummy. Um, acute viral hepatitis can lead to uh, right upper quadrant pain. Um, congestive hepatomegaly, liver tumors. Then there are many intrathoracic secretions like myocardial infarction. A very important thing to rule out whenever you are looking like we're seeing a patient um, more than 40 years of age, uh, especially a male who ha who are complaining, for example, epigastric pain, always rule out MI. Um, basal lobar pneumonia, lung abscess, pericarditis, spontaneous pneumothorax. So see, uh, these are um, comparatively, you can say, non-surgical cases, okay? Um, like which will lead to, uh, what you can say, acute abdomen. Uh, then again, there are many other conditions which can lead to um, pain in abdomen but again not surgical causes uh, diabetic ketoacidosis uremia adrenocortical insufficiency hypercalcemia acute intermittent porphyria uh, heavy metals poisoning hemolytic crisis of chronic hemolytic anemia polycythemia hinox and purpura lymphoma leukemia so see uh, now this is like the first slide this is the second slide and this is the third slide all of them they can cause abdominal pain but all of them they are non-surgical causes uh, so uh, even if you will see the neural the non-surgical causes are uh, grouped according to metabolic hematological and neurological and collagen vascular diseases like herpes zoster, spinal cord compression, degenerative disc prolapse, metastasis, nerve entrapments, um, systemic lupus erythematosus, polyarthritis nodosa, and abdominal pain caused by thrombosis of visceral arteries leading to visceral infarction. Uh, so, uh, no need to remember guys and see, uh, with time, with knowledge, the things become clear uh, we remember a lot of these things and we just remember the important things for example uh, if i am uh, having a patient who is complaining of pain in abdomen and she's a female she's a sexually active female i am never going to miss ectopic pregnancy i am never going to miss uh, ectopic pregnancy this is very 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 important okay uh, if I am uh, dealing with a patient who is complaining of pain uh, in abdomen and uh, he's 75 years of age and so abdominal aortic aneurysm becomes very 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 important so the thing goes like this way so you can see over here and uh, now see these are the things we give which give generalized acute pain okay and these are the pains, things which give central abdominal pain, appendicitis, uh, small bowel obstruction, gastritis, pancreatitis, ruptured aortic aneurysm, mesenteric thrombosis. Now, these are the things which most of the time typically gives epigastric pain, uh, duodenal ulcer or ga ga gastric ulcer, esophagitis, acute pancreatitis or AAA aortic aneurysm uh, these are the things which give right upper quadrant pain gallbladder diseases duodenal ulcer acute pancreatitis pneumonia subphrenic abscess and hepatitis as well left upper quadrant pain again um, gastric ulcer pneumonia acute pancreatitis spontaneous splenic rupture acute perinephritis and subphrenic abscess 
same thing with suprapubic pain acute urinary retention uti cystitis in the females pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic pregnancy are important and in old people diverticulitis a diverticulitis mostly give this one left quadrant pain so rif for right inferior quadrant c a lot of things are there starting from acute appendicitis mesenteric adenitis perforated uterine ulcer diverticulitis in the females pelvic inflammatory disease self-angitis ectopic pregnancy and in both of the age groups the rest of the others are written same thing loin pain so loin pain is like uh, mostly these are the renal causes or some sort of muscle muscle strain which can give this kind of pain and left inferior quadrant pain if you will see diverticulitis constipation ibs pelvic inflammatory disease rectal carcinoma ulcerative colitis or like or ectopic pregnancy so see uh, if you understand these things uh, i was just giving until now the basic orientation and i'm i'm telling you this lecture is about knowing the basics okay and how to approach uh, how to deal with this basics okay see guys so whenever we had any patient uh, of course the first thing we will go and we are going to take the take the history now to take the history of pain i told you many 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 times you have to be organized you have to be very careful while taking history don't miss any important point whatever mnemonic you are using or if you are not using any mnemonic but always inquire about the site the origin the radiation the character of the pain the severity of the pain the timing of the pain uh, this is the onset how long it is there okay uh, the timing of the pain uh okay uh okay the aggravating and relieving factors and associated symptoms okay so like all the things should be inquired so uh simply guys you know a very important thing is uh, uh a detailed and organized history is very important to formulate your differential diagnosis uh and of course like when you will formulate your differential diagnosis uh after taking history and examination you can do run some investigations to uh, confirm your diagnosis and then you are going to uh give them some type type of treatment okay so that's very important so now uh once you have asked all the pain questions okay uh you will uh you have to look all these things you know you have to keep in account or uh, keep in mind all the different um dimensions or you can say aspects of the pain as well as the associated symptoms to formulate some sort of differential diagnosis uh, for example uh um and with time you are going to learn a lot of clinical skills like uh, how to uh, take history how to do the examination um, how to get the correct information uh, you can see like one thing is in front of you like anyone who is describing his pain colicky in nature like the pain goes comes and goes so uh, it could be bowel obstruction it could be ibs right or it could be biliary colic and things like this so uh, one thing is this one um uh, so uh, one thing for example if you're asking patient you know where is the pain if the patient is putting all over hand on the place so it means it is some sort of generalized pain for example if the patient is pointing at one side so of course like it means the pain pain is localized okay uh, things are like this 
uh, again now see uh, nagging and nagging and grumbling pain is like in this case is a stabbing pain in case of uh, aortic aneurysm again stabbing pain in case of pancreatitis burning or boring pain in case of uh, esophagitis pa uh, peptic ulcer disease or pancreatitis also pancreatitis okay so of course I cannot include each and everything over here okay uh, whatever I remember but once you will for example when you will study appendicitis you would remember the nature of that pain if when you will study pancreatitis you would remember the nature of that pain uh, same thing we study uh, will recollect we remember the nature of that pain so uh, you have to with time you have to remember the things and uh, then uh, the things will become uh, clear to you okay so now uh, this is an ignoring type of pain and then see they see we look like either there is any fever what are the associated symptoms right so not just like the, the nature of the pain but the severity of the pain is very important for example uh, uh, people who have pancreatitis they have very severe type of pain uh, people who have uh, for example a renal stone have a very very severe type of pain uh, people who have appendicitis for example they have comparatively uh, less um, severity of the pain um, so uh, many things are there right so um, one thing is also progression you can check the progression of the pain either the pain is increasing decreasing or it's the same so like this way so we have to uh, like what I mean to say over here is that uh, you have to analyze okay uh, you have to analyze uh, how what is the character of the pain what is the nature of the pain what is the locality of the pain what is the radiation of the pain uh, for example um, in many of the patients who have pain of a okay uh, for example you know the stone or the kidney stone or the ureteric stone the pain is radiated towards the scrotum okay in males and towards the labia uh, in females for example the pain of uh, appendicitis uh, sometimes it starts in the center of the abdomen but then they started feeling the pain on the right of the of the abdomen for example the pain of pancreatitis it's it radiate backwards it's a boring type of pain so we have to keep in account all these things. So, uh, as I told you, that small bowel pain is felt around the umbilical region. And uh, same thing with other pain. So, like you will, you will uh, inquire about all these things. A very important question is to ask about the aggravating and relieving factors. For example, uh, peptic ulcer disease eating exaggerate the pain fatty meal exaggerate the meal the pain fatty patient 40s female spicy food or fatty food brings the pain okay for example someone uh, some of the people depending on the site of their ulcer Food can relieve their pain of the gastric ulcer as well. And many things like this, you know, some of the pains, the patient know that, okay, in this position, the pain is less. So that's a relieving factor, okay. And in the associated symptoms, uh, here just four are written, but there are many associated symptoms. It could be nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, uh, change in the stool color, Blood and urine, for example, hematuria, all these are um, uh, associated symptoms. For example, see, a patient with loin pain, uh, very, or a colicky type of pain, and the pain is radiated towards scrotum, and uh, um, for example, yeah, he said like, you know, uh, after pain, 
uh, or with pain he is having some somewhat uh, reddish type of urine okay or it seems like the the urine color has changed so now uh, you see this is taking my mind towards something called as ureteric stone things thing works like this way okay so not just this but a uh, someone who haven't passed any stool for uh, few many hours or day or for or for a day and he have central pain and he's old age he have previous history of laparotomy or he have weight loss so it sounds more like intestinal obstruction right so things goes like this way uh, now for example if uh, a patient is coming with abdominal pain a uh, generalized abdominal pain on history you found that you know uh, he have nausea vomiting and he eat something from outside and he have diarrhea he have vomiting he have fever so now it sounds more like a gastroenteritis right which is a non surgical type of uh, case uh, then of course we ask the past history okay um, we we ask uh, about the past history uh, what you can say the past surgical and medical history both we ask the family history in females a very important thing to ask is to ask about the gynecological history okay uh, that is very important uh, ask about previous surgeries which are done ask about any previous investigations ask about drug history ask about allergy history okay and in very few cases ask about social history so everything makes sense medications are important some of the medication side effect is basically abdominal pain uh, i told you when someone is giving up uh, drugs for example narcotics they may have abdominal pain okay so uh, why uh, anything can occur okay for example uh, um for example uh, someone who is using for example nsaids for a long period of time so nsaids can lead to um the development of gastric ulcer so anything can be helpful so that's why we should ask history in detail and in females never ever forget to ask about the gynecological history okay uh, why because a sexually um, active female may have uh, what you can say um uh ectopic pregnancy right or middle schwarz anything so once you have done the history then we go for the physical examination now is in physical examination uh now see guys i i'm not going to talk about the physical examination in too much detail but if you know how to examine the patient uh you know first of all um uh, um vitals are very important vitals okay vitals are very important okay take the vitals do the gpe uh, do the, the focus examination of course in emergency um okay many of the cases of course we can, we cannot do the examination uh, for example a patient who have pancreatitis you know they are in so much pain that they don't even allow you to touch their tummies okay and nowadays by the way uh, sometimes you know we sometimes not always we don't go for examination at all rather we go directly for investigations and of course like you know history in emergencies is quite quick okay so of course like nowadays you can do ultrasonography you can send the patient for ct scan you can send the patient for mri but again that doesn't means like physical examination is not used physical examination helps the clinicians the surgeons to narrow down their differential diagnosis so uh, again vitals should be the first thing uh, then do the gpe general physical examination look for any sign of joinders anything depending on what is the presentation of the patient we are discussing right now a lot of condition so i cannot be focused on one thing so do the gpe check for pallor check for cyanosis 
um, check for how the journal generally the patient uh, looks like for example a patient who is in too much pain who cannot sit even who is moving his sides a uh, point towards something uh, very could be very serious like ischemic bowel disease okay things like this so uh, and then of course like we are discussing abdomen so uh, we will be looking for at the abdomen and uh, we will first of all we will do the inspection of the abdomen we check the uh, shape of the abdomen is distended or it's flat it's scaphoid uh, any obvious mass any obvious movement uh, any hernial orifices which we can found okay uh, so all these things okay any any skin signs we can found on the patient so all these things can be checked uh, in the patient so uh, after that uh, once we have done this thing we go for palpation okay and uh, now uh, palpation you know uh, may, maybe like many of you will say or uh, there could be a question like auscultation should come before palpation and my answer to this thing is simple uh, being a medical student you know uh, learn the basics okay uh, of course uh, in reality or the consultants of course uh, maybe they will not palpate rather they will auscultate why because now it depends on the patient for example if you are suspecting that the patient have intestinal obstruction for example then of course auscultation can provide you very useful information about the bowel sound okay uh, what is the quality of the uh, bowel sound what is the quantity of the bowel sounds uh, for example if the, the abdomen is quiet so it could be ileus okay whereas if the if there is too much bowel sounds are coming uh, so it could be uh, ischemic intestine so all those things so uh, if the sounds of bowel sounds are coming a uh, high pitched tinkling sound uh, which is associated with pain so it could be bowel obstruction so uh, simply uh, you you can auscultate in that case otherwise you will go for palpation okay so uh, of course like we will auscultate uh, and we can do palpation uh, check for tenderness, rebound tenderness, guarding and rigidity. Okay, uh, very 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 important things. Um, I don't know now how much you know about uh, 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 know about what is guarding, what is rigidity. But let me explain you these things in a few lines. Uh, percussion or uh, palpation is very important. Okay. Uh, Palpation uh, is very important in, um, you can say, diagnosing or in uh, knowing if the patient has peritonitis or not. Or just to check the tenderness, where exactly it is. Uh, so for that, of course, we can do palpation. Or to check like if there is any ab abnormal abdominal mass, if there is any organomegaly. Uh, and remember, like whenever we palpate, first of all, we do a light palpation or superficial palpation. Then we go for the deep palpation. And if there is too much pain as a result of palpation, the patient is likely to tense his abdominal muscles. Okay. And that is going to uh, make it hard for you to palpate the patient more. Okay. Uh, and if, for example, Okay, uh, so you know, when you are palpating and the patient is making his abdominal muscles, muscles tense, or this is called as guarding, okay? And whenever this guarding is present involuntarily, like the patient is not doing this, but it is present anyways, it means that the abdominal wall muscles are basically in spasms. And this is a sign of peritonitis. And, but you must distinguish or you must um, know that this is involuntary guarding so uh, that points toward peritonitis okay um, this is very important um, and uh, uh, it, it gives a very very useful information about what the patient have and uh, uh, then you know okay and of course you know before palpation we always ask the patient if they have any pain in the tummy so when they have pain in the tummy remember to palpate that thing in the end okay uh, not in the start so 
uh, and now you know you will you are going to when you are going to study appendicitis you would know uh, what is uh, a rebound tenderness or what is uh, there are different signs which are there uh, for example there is murphy signs and there are different type of signs which are present anyhow our discussion is not that one right now uh, then of course we can go for the percussion okay so see like here it is written like what if there is tenderness in the right iliac fossa uh, whatever there is localized tenderness and whatever there is flank tenderness so uh, these are the name of all the what you can say uh, you can see over here there are the certain signs which are given like Cullen signs okay Keher signs McBurney signs so uh, all the signs of course like uh, even if I will keep on saying this thing you won't remember so uh, when you're going to discuss like or uh, study the uh, particular things you are going to know uh, what these signs are meant for okay so uh, I have some uh, uh, photographs also in the slide which I'm going to show you um, in a while okay so uh, of course like we will do palpation and then we uh, like we can go for percussion uh, percussion is very important in this uh, uh, respect that uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, it can tell us like if there is dissension so either there is um, ascites or there is free air in the tummy in the abdomen and all those things so uh, percussion and the auscultation I already talked about that thing right um, so uh, and remember guys no abdominal examination is completed without digital rectal examination um, and it should be performed in all the patients with acute abdominal pain uh, which can guide you towards if there is any blood on the finger or intraluminal blood and uh, in the females always examine their pelvic organs um, always uh, check the admixal tenderness as well so these are the examination points so, uh, uh, once the examination is done, uh, like in the females, of course, like do that PV examination. PV examination is per vaginal examination, and PR is basically per rectal examination. Basically, this is called as DRE, which is digital rectal examination. So, uh, you can write over here DRE, which is basically digital rectal. Um, examination okay so uh, no examination is covered without that okay now um, uh, once you know uh, we are done with history and physical examination of course uh, uh, then is the thing we are going to decide um, what the patient needs next. If you can see over here, three things are written. Uh, whatever is your differential diagnosis right now. See, either the patient is very sick or sick or you can say reasonably well. Uh, or simply, uh, a very sick patient needs immediate attention or resuscitation. A sick patient or ill patient who can stay there for a couple of hours, need some urgent investigations and management, whereas a reasonably well patient can wait, or in that patient, uh, we can, or we have enough time to go through the lab investigations or uh, radiological investigations and to formulate the correct diagnosis and then going to manage so uh, depending again uh, I'm not going on lab diagnosis right now rather I'm telling you for example if the patient is an emergency or if the patient is very sick of course then it's an emergency we are going to do a b c d e which is we are going to check their airway breathing circulation disability and exposure and we are going to resuscitate them we are going to give them IV fluids and simply we are going to involve the team to manage the patient right for example a uh, ruptured aortic aneurysm for example um, maybe a bowel obstruction for example maybe a ruptured ectopic pregnancy 
from anything. Whereas uh, in the other patients, uh, we can go for investigations. Now, there is a lot of investigations. Some of them, they are routine basic investigations. Uh, some of them, they are targeted uh, investigations to reach the diagnosis. Um, for example, uh, CBC or full blood count, CBC, whatever is, you know, uh, you say it. It's very important. For example, if it is showing leukocytosis, which means infection. Uh, so there is a number of investigations you can see which are written over here. And now, you know, because there are a lot of causes of acute abdomen, of course, we are not going to run this investigation in every patient. We, uh, you can say, formulate the investigations or we uh, um, make the mind or uh, uh, we trim the investigations according to what the patient needs. Either the patient needs electrolytes, either the patient needs blood urea nitrogen, either the creatinine level should be checked. Um, either the patient need MILAs and lipase, either the patient need uh, uh, what you can say uh, clotting profile to be checked, so on and so forth. So either like LFTs should be done, either ABGs or atrial blood gases should be done or the patient needs like urine analysis. So simply uh, depending on what is your uh, uh, differential diagnosis, you are going to send the uh, labs um, to the uh, of the patient uh, to check. Okay, so uh, uh, after that, of course, uh, and of course, like pregnancy test, whenever the it's a female and you are suspecting or expecting a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Then we can go for imaging studies, right? So uh, in imaging studies, you know, a very important thing is x-ray. And nowadays, of course, CT scan. It's quick. It gives a lot of valuable information. Um, of course, nowadays, uh, we have fast scanner also. Um, we have portable CD scans as well, uh, available in the hospitals. Uh, so uh, again, it depends on the patient. Uh, we can decide either the CD scan would give us too much information, either a chest X-ray or abdominal X-ray is going to give uh, a lot of information. Okay, either an erect X-ray should be done, either a supine X-ray should be done either a lateral decubitus cells uh, x-ray should be done. So all the things can be planned accordingly. So uh, in simple words, we are going to send the patient for the investigation. Um, ultrasonographies are available nowadays, okay. Uh, ultrasonography, like as we were discussing before in the previous lecture is very, very uh, valuable in uh, for example, you know, in detecting gallstones, right? Uh, and uh, they are also very valuable in other cases as well. Okay, but uh, one of the example I'm giving you is of gallbladder, of course, because we had covered it recently. So simply, um, of course, like all these investigations are available and we can run any of them, okay? Here are the photographs of some x-rays. See, you can see the gas under diaphragm, which shows, which tells like the patient has some perforation. So see a gas in intestines. Okay, so very valuable information in you know, x-rays quickly can give. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the x-ray of a volvulus, you can see. A CT scan. Okay, so uh, simply um, see large appendicular abscess containing gas in this one. And here, this is a CT scan of a acute pancreatitis. Uh, see around the pancreas, there is a lot of 
peri pancreatic inflammation you can see over here this is pancreatic necrosis so in this slide like of course i'm going to approach the slide and you can take a look um, a lot of what you can say uh, uh, this one is like uh, abscesses in the spleen can be seen so a lot of like uh, a strangulated bowel ischemia a lot of things can be seen okay so um, Uh, now guys like you know once you have done uh, uh, this one uh, what you can say the test of course um, I'm going to remove all the things because I don't think so uh, you guys need this thing rather I will say uh, management okay uh, okay management depends on the cause for example, if the patient has pancreatitis, manage that. If the patient have uh, ectopic pregnancy, manage that. If the patient have appendicitis, do appendicectomy. If the patient have uh, peptic ulcer, treat that. If the, if the patient have aortic aneurysm, treat that. If the patient have ruptured aortic aneurysm, treat that. Uh, but uh, what are the things? Uh, which can be done um, uh, to manage these patients. Now, management depends on how urgent is the management. For example, there could be an emergency surgery. Okay. So now, of course, like if the patient have emergency surgery, so then they, you don't have enough time to prepare the patient for surgery. Rather. You are going to just maintain the IV access, take the patient to uh, operating room, give them a shot of antibiotic and uh, put all the tubes which are necessary and uh, attach the patient with monitors, uh, ask the blood bank to arrange for transfusions whatever and you are going to provide or you are going to do what is necessary right on the other hand if the patient have uh, for example uh, so one case is the emergency right directly to um, emergency room in other cases, for example, the patient the surgery is not so quick or quickly needed, then of course you are going to decide what kind of surgery is needed. For example, either laparoscopic surgery can be done, either laparotomy can be done. Okay. And of course this thing completely depends on the patient condition, patient uh, like uh, simply you are going to plan an elective surgery in simple words. Okay, so elective surgery can be done, can be planned. So as I told you, there are different. See, this one is like removal of appendicitis appendix, which is separative. Removal of Michael's diverticulum. This is a volvulus of Michael diverticulum. See, it is all congested, necrosed, dead tissue they are going to remove. See, this is a torsion of ovarian cyst. See, it is so congested because the blood supply is compromised. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Acute cholecystitis. This is sigmoid volvulus. They are reducing it. So, this is perforation, this is laparotomy, you will see a lot of gas in the intestines. So, that's all about this surgery.
uh, acute abdomen. I hope you understand the concept of this thing. And uh, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.